All right, so I showed that kind of preliminary uh, binding and kind of adding, smoothing, those sorts of tools with the paint skin weights tool in there. And also a few, a few stuff, uh, a few things about the component editor. However, some people's, uh, based on how their character looks, some people's bind skin button does a lot better job, does a lot better of a job. So say that when you were, when you click the bind skin, and uh, in fact, let me just rebind the skin. So I'm gonna unbind it. So now that's no longer connected to the skeleton. Let's just make sure. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, let me move this around. I need to click back on that joints layer right there. Uh, now remember with Rapid Rig, you have that uh, kind of select joints tool in there. Uh, I'm going to do bind skin again. Joint hierarchy though. Uh, with, if you're not doing the single hierarchy, then you need to go in and select all the joints yourself or click that rapid rig button. But I'm going to just bind that. And I'm just doing this to get closer to what you guys have if you haven't done any sort of messing with the skin weights. Uh, so this is my default skin. And like, like before, it has that same crumpling in there. Uh, and stuff just is kind of a little bit too bendy in places, maybe not bendy enough. Um, now, some people's rigs might be, or some people's models might be deforming really nicely. Like when, when you bend your shoulders, your shoulders might be better. When you bend your head, well, let's see what we, what the, how the head went. When you bend your head, you might have good deformation there as well. Uh, my, mine's kind of decent, actually, but, um, but I'm sure, that, I don't know, the, 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 these face joints will probably get a lot worse. Yeah, like notice how he's not even opening his mouth. Um, but like you guys don't have face joints or anything. Uh, but like if your if your models like like default skinning is pretty good, um, feel free to start animating with it. Uh, and then I'm sure when you're when you're animating, you might find some other things that aren't bending so well. And uh, we'll go into that first. Um, if your if your skin is looking fine and you want to just animate straight up, then go look up the tutorials for that later in the class because we're going to use a thing called referencing in uh, the model for the animation. Uh, that means that if you do a bunch of animation, you're not animating directly on this rig file. You're instead referencing in that file to then animate. And then, uh, so if you find something that doesn't bend very well with the, the skin weights, you can always go back to this first, like this source file and get it in there. Um, but that's only if your skin weights are good. I anticipate that a lot of yours aren't because the tool, while it tries its best, it doesn't have, uh, doesn't have great deformation all, all the way around. So what we need to do, start skinning this bad boy. So I'm, I'm gonna show you the most, it's the most brute force method. Uh, if you have most of the model bending around nicely, deforming nicely, except for like one spot, you might wanna not do this method. You might wanna just kind of focus on those skin weights in there. Uh, but this method that I'm gonna show has the most, by far the most control over everything that you're doing. And, uh, but it is, it is pretty laborious as well. Like it's gonna take a while to set up. So basically this method, it, and it's covered in my simple skinning video. We basically just override all of the, all of the skinning weights that we have on here. And uh, if I recommend doing this if your model has kind of poor deformation all around. 
me personally, I do this no matter what. I always, I always just reset the, the weights and do them myself because you, you'll find stuff later when you're animating that like doesn't match up. This is the best way to kind of single out everything. So I click on my root joint in here and I crank up my value to one, my opacity to one, and I'm on add and I just flood everything there. And it is painful, but it removes all the weighting from everything else. So now I have a mesh. If I go back into the paint skin weights by holding right click, I'm going to paint skin weights, you can see it'll pop this up. By the way, if you're not seeing this menu, you can always access it again by going to the tool settings up here. It's in that, it's in that top right thing. So now we're, we're forced to kind of start going through. And I'm going to start with the legs first. So let's do a uh, hip joint. So you'll notice that if I have this root and the hip, this hip clearly needs more influence, right? So I usually go into, now you can either like press Q or W to get out of paint mode and you can just start selecting verts in here. And that's, that's what I do a lot. Oh, wait, let me, uh, let me make this joint layer reference so I don't click it. And I can go in here and select my verts. Oh, I need to add that one as well. Um, so that's a, that's a little bonus joint that's specifically for the game engine. So the game engine knows where that's lying. You guys will not have that one, so you won't need to worry about that. Um, let me make sure I can't select it. Oh, let's add that as well, the control for it. All right, so verts. So I'm basically, like all of the all the skin weights are on that pelvis joint right now. So if I move this pelvis joint around, see that the character is <laughs> just kind of falling that one to one. However, that's not what we want. We need each of these joints to have some bend to it. So if I go into vertex mode, and if I drag select over these, and uh, I'm just basically trying to select all the thing, all, all the verts inside of this like that would move along with that hip. And I wanna get these verts as well in there. And some of these too. So yeah, that's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good. I'm just selecting these interior sort of verts of that leg. I'm sure it's hard to kind of see on your side, but, um, but yeah, so I just, I was selecting those kind of interior points. Yeah, let's get those ones in there too. Hell yeah, all right. So now I'm gonna hold right click. I'm gonna go to my paint skin weights tool. And uh, there's a lot of joints that you have open in, in this list, right? And especially with my face joints in here. Uh, but if you want to quickly go back to the joint you already had, you can just click this. Boom. So I, I already had that hip selected, so it just automatically locks that menu on there. And so I have all of those verts selected. Make sure you don't have symmetry on, because otherwise you'll have you'll be flooding to the wrong. The, the wrong weights on there. And I'm just gonna go for a flood on this. So now I'm gonna switch my control over to, well, eh, it's, it's fine. If I move this out, you'll see that his leg is 100% going with that first hip joint in there, you know. However, we need this knee to have influence over it as well. So if we go back in, and I'm just going to go to vertex mode and I'm going to drag select over some of these. 
And let's get some of these in here as well. So we're just getting more spans of that knee pad in there. So that's all selected up. I go back in my paint skin weights tool. Now I selected everything from the knee down, right? Because I want that to lie or to, to be influenced by this knee joint. So if I go in and it's always, if, if you're working in a hierarchy like that, it's always nice to press this button. You can easily find that knee joint. I'm just gonna flood to that knee joint now. And you can even go into different modes in this, uh, in this top part right here. And so that's in select mode. And you can go back into vertex because we already did the knee. So I just got a Discord notification. Not sure if it's, yeah, it doesn't look like it's for this class. Um, so you can just straight up select this stuff. So I'm basically selecting everything from the ankle down, right? Because that, that ankle joint is going to influence everything from the ankle down. I'm going to go back into paint mode. I'm going to select. Oh, wait, whoops, my bad. I'm going to click this little uh, snap the menu to the proper ankle. And then uh, to the proper joint. And I'm going to select my ankle joint. I'm going to flood that. So you notice now if I move this around that uh, that the influences are coming along. You can see that I definitely had some sort of issue in here. Uh, I guess I just did not have these verts selected. So I can just fix that up real quick by going into paint mode. And then on that knee, if I go into add with 100% opacity, 100% value, I should be able to paint that to stick on there. And it's looking pretty good there. Okay. Now I want to get this. Uh, I want to get this the the ball of the foot to bend. So uh, this ball joint right here, you can see that it will have influence from this point on. So I'm going to go back into select. I'm going to drag select over these. And I'm going to go back into paint mode in here. And that's, that's basically the same as um, pressing Q and dragging select over some verts and then going back into paint, uh, the, the paint skin weights tool. But now I need to, oops. Oh, I messed up my selection. Uh, I, I need to find my left joint of that foot again. Where is it? There we go. And I'm going to flood to that. And there we go. So now if I go into my foot and I'm just going to look and into my channel box and I'll be able to control the heel ball control in there so you can see how it kind of pivots along that. So you can see some of the problems that are arising. Not so much in this part right here, but mostly in this in this knee joint, right? So if you move this around, you can see that it's pinching the back of the, uh, of this. Like it, we would, in reality, as that knee bends, some of this kind of leather material would kind of kind of get pushed back in there. So what we need to do is give this hip some of that influence over this knee joint right because this knee is uh pretty much controlling these verts around it one to one right like they're following completely along that knee and uh, if you look in the paint the in the skin weights that knee is basically either white or black in this and this gradient is just between those verts, but those, as far as verts go, all of the verts are like white or completely black. Um, and so if I get this bend out of there, 
if I put this back down there. We can go in, and this is the type of scenario that we use smooth with, right? The uh, that that kind of this setting right here, and it'll smooth between those. However, this is when locking is extremely important. So first, you do that flood, that flood on each joint, um, and then the next step is to smooth, right? The the influence between those two, so you get that nice gradient. Now, this doesn't apply to people with robots, really, because robots like are moving upon joints, like hard metal joints that don't bend at all. So they will, will just be flooding, and they probably won't even mess around with this next step. But for people with organic forms, you're going to need to smooth. However, if we smooth right now, those weights are going to be flying around the model because we haven't told Maya between or which joints between we're going to be kind of smoothing to. And uh, so if I just started going all willy nilly, just started smoothing out these values, it might work decently for now, but later in like complex regions like the shoulder where you have this one pointing out here, and then this spine going here, and you have the neck joint, joint going above it, you might run into some problems uh, in which it's smoothing values, and then you'll see like this right joint, like joints that are kind of close in proximity will start stealing those weights because it's smoothing between all the joints in the area. So we need to do, we need to use locking to kind of tell it which ones we want to smooth between. So, in this knee area, we're, we only want to be dealing with the hip joint and this knee joint. So I want everything locked besides the hip and the knee. So I'm going to click this, uh, select every other option, and I'm just going to click that lock button. And I'm going to notice how my knee joint is still locked. So if I want to mess with the weights between that, I'll need to unlock those two. And the rule of thumb is to basically only have two joints unlocked at a time when you're skinning or when you're painting these skin weights. Because if you have more unlocked and then you start smoothing, it's going to start spreading to that other joint in there. And you'll get paranoid as you go throughout this. Uh, so like every, every time, you'll just make sure that every single other joint is locked. And this button is going to be a very nice friend for you because it, it easily lets you select every other joint in the list right there. Like that. But yeah, so we only need to worry about the hip and the knee. And the hip joint is going up here and it's meeting with that knee joint. So we need that hip joint to have, a, it needs to be a nicer gradient between these two. So if I go in, if I start, smoothing those values. Notice how it's getting nice and gray in there. Now, I'm going to show you in a little bit an easier way to kind of get at some of these points that you're seeing in there. Uh, but it does add a step of kind of complexity. Uh, and then these joints right here need to be smoothed as well. Let me start getting some kind of nice mid values in there. Uh, my extrusion for this kind of goes deep down in there. And we won't need to worry about much of that geometry down there because it's like out of sight. Uh, however, this, this outer rim is going to definitely need to bend, right? So the knee has 100% control over that. The hip needs a little bit of control. Uh, it, needs, it needs a little bit of influence on that. So I'm going to add to that hip. And I'm going to use, I'm going to use a lower value. Because I only want to add a little bit on there. And you'll see that it's starting to get a little bit more, a little more of a gray in there.
I'm just clicking and dragging over that. So now let's see what this looks like when it starts bending around. And that's the key, right? Because the, the entire point of this is to get nice bends in our animation when we start posing these characters. So you can kind of see that it's kind of pushing in too hard. That hip is pushing too much on that now. And we need to give the knee some more influence over these joints or over these verts in here. Sorry, misspoke there. Uh, the problem is that you kind of need to paint it in this view, right? And then you need to go back and then you need to kind of preview it in a, in a more bent state. And then you need to go back and fix it, go back to this. So what I do when I'm isolating a part of the body like this, so I set a key and I'll set one at one. And then I'll set another one at 12 right there. And I'm just setting a key by pressing S. Remember back from, back from that good old first, first day of class, back when we were animating. And then I'm pressing S again when I, when I set it up there. So now I can just drag the timeline between those, right? If I go back into my painting, in paint skin weights tool now, I can bring this to a more extended part and back to that easily. And I don't, I don't have to exit the skin weights tool, I don't have to do any of that. So if I just start, if I start smoothing, or if I start adding some influence on this knee right here, to this stuff up here, we can easily just see how that bend is going from there. Oops. This hip, I kind of want the hip to have a little bit of control in there. And I'm just using the add brush right now. The hip needs a little bit of, it needs more control over these birds in here. So they're not poking through as hard. And the knee, it needs to bend a little bit in there. So I'm gonna use smooth for that because I want, I want this to be a little bit of a smoother transition into that knee area. I don't want this all crumpling up as hard as it is right now. Okay, so he said hip right now. Does he mean the thigh? When I say hip, I'm I'm referring to it as the hip because if you, I don't know if you guys can see exactly with like the resolution in here, but this joint right here, this highlighted joint, this blue one, is called hip. That's called hip. So that, I, that's why I'm referring to it as hip because when you guys go through this list, uh, it is basically the thigh, right? Like this, this area down here is the thigh. Like these are the thighs. And they, they need that control, right? But if I refer to it as the thigh right here and then you go and start trying to paint and you see that it's the hip joint, it'll be a bit confusing. There'll be a little bit of a disjoint there. So... I just want to, I'm, I'm just using the, the joint names when I'm referring to these pieces. Uh, because if you think of it in terms of like thighs and stuff, then you're going to be kind of lost when you try to figure out where these uh, influences need to lie. But yeah, so I'm just smoothing up that stuff over there. Uh, this hip needs a little bit more influence in here. But yeah, guys, please, please, by all means, raise a hand when you're, uh, if you're at all lost. I'm going to kind of add, like, look how deep down this point is in here. Um, I'm going to need to add the, to the knee. Add that back to get to the knee. There we go. 
and I kind of want to use add at the very, I'm going to use a very low value on this and see how that starts to look. I'm using like a 0 0.03 value on that knee in there. So I'm trying to just kind of get those fruits ease into that bend. As well as these points, like the, like this is completely black, so the, the hip joint is not controlling that at all, but it needs to pull that back in there. And this gets considerably easier the longer you do it, guys. So um, don't get disheartened when, you, when you're painting on your guys' side. I'm just kind of getting this to be nice in there. And I might, I might try a little bit of smoothing on here and see what it looks like. So if I smooth between these, it's kind of averaging out these points. Kind of getting a, a nice volume in there while it's bending. Man, our goal is to just get nicely bending characters on this. Now let's see what this looks like in motion a little bit more. It's a lot better than what we had before. I might even, I might even get a slight bit of influence up here, just very slight. Kind of see what that looks like. Yeah. Okay. So it looks like more like a hamstring in there as well. But yeah. So that's what that's what we did for the knee. I might go back in later and massage these kind of things, but I want to just get, get uh, keep going on this leg. Uh, now I I'm done with this hip joint. So remember this hip joint up here, this highlighted blue one. Is controlling these verts now, and I'm, I'm fine right now with where those with or where those verts are ending up when you when it bends. It's not automatically mirrored. You have to manually mirror it at the very end of the process. And I was going to show that after I paint up this the rest of this leg. So we're done with the hip. So now we can lock those values down over here because we don't want to touch those hip values at all. And if we go and unlock the ankle now. We can start working on smoothing the values in here. Let's smooth those right up. So if we, yeah, make sure. Okay. Oh, oh my little my little tool is gone. Uh, one second. Why? Oh, one second. Go back into paint skin weights. All right. Cool. So I'm gonna start, I'm um, using smooth at max value right now. And be, caref be careful, like I said before, like sometimes painting on these white, uh, pure white faces kind of messes Maya up. And it bugs out and doesn't, it doesn't give you the proper smooth values on the skin. Uh, so I'm just starting smoothing the black values first. In here, get those out. It's also just visually easier to see the black values. Um, also one detail, if you guys start Googling this to find some other documentation, which I wholeheartedly support, um, it's always nice to find tutorials from all around the place. You guys don't have to just stick with mine. Um, you might see some, uh, skin weights that look like this and it basically means the same thing, but they use a color, uh, a color gradient in here to show the difference between black and white. That's what I normally paint with. So you might see that on my tutorials even. But, uh, but for here, I just find it clearer visually to describe what these values mean when they're black and white. But yeah, so now we're getting some 
smooth values in there. Let's see what that ankle is looking like when it bends. It's looking pretty nice. Okay. Oops. There you go. Pretty sick. Pretty sick. Okay. And then going back into painting skin weights. We're done with that knee now, right? The knee weights, the difference between the knee and the hip are all already fine. Got a head to work. If there's any important announcements at the end, please also post them on Discord. Um, let me think right now. I don't think there's anything important. We already covered mirroring, but I'll go again. I'll, I'll do that at the end as well. Um, but yeah, no, I think I think you got everything. But yeah, please try to have, please try to have your skin weights done by next next week's class because I'm going to start going into animation. I'm going to start going into animation there. But yeah, I'll look for your YouTube vids after you. Awesome, awesome. This one will just be labeled like class uh, for uh, April 8th. But yeah, have a good one. Yeah, get that, get that bread, dude. Let's see. So now we have to do the ball, the, the difference between these ones right here. So let's, um, I just got some sort of alert, some sort of message. Wait, did someone like raise their hand or something? Anything like that? Um, I don't know exactly what that was, but, uh, but yeah, if you, if you have any questions, please just put them in the Zoom group chat. I am, I am glancing at that every, every now and then. Um, so yeah, so now we're done with the knee and the knee and the ankle look pretty nice, but we need to fix the ankle and the ball joint area. So if we, if we move this around, uh, let's do toe up down. Kind of crumples that, that first one. So again, I'm probably going to, just gonna go in here. And since we don't need to worry about this bend anymore, I'm just going to delete these keys. And Maya's doing a weird thing where it's not updating the viewport exactly, but yeah. So now it is pretty cool, Maya. Pretty nice bug there. Um, and you'll notice that it's, it's, it's always important to set a key at these zero values if you do that method where I set the two keys and kind of go between them. Because at the end, we need to have our character completely zeroed out. We have completely zero values in there to, to mirror the weights properly. But yeah, so I'm going to set a key right there. And then I'm gonna to go to 12. And I'm gonna go into this channel box, toe up, down, control. And I'm just gonna start, uh, you can start sliding them around. Uh, oh man, is the viewport still not doing anything? Oh man, yeah, I don't think it is, let's see. Yeah, okay, so cool. That's gonna be nice for this lecture, just to have a display issue like that. But yeah, so this thing is gonna need a little bit of smoothing as well. So if I go into paint skin weights, and then unlock that ball, because if you have all of them locked, none of your painting's gonna do anything. So you always keep track of what you have locked and what you have unlocked. And so yeah, we could clearly need to smooth some of these in here. So if we get both of them unlocked, start smoothing on these weights. We can get a nice bend in there. And let's see what that bend up looks like. It's not as bad anymore. You just keep smoothing those values in there. All right. I might even give it a little bit of these ones back here too. But yeah, so now that's now it's bending a, a bit better. Uh, 
I do kind of leave the values on the underside of the foot pretty pretty stark. That way you can get that nice foot plant in there if you're if you're using it. Um, but yeah, so there you go. That's that's the that's one leg all skinned up. Let's move it around. Double check. Now the the hip is a little bit different. Um, one because I have this this like leg guard control for this little plating here. Uh, but you also when you're when you're dealing with the the leg down there. Let me get it. Let me get all these keys out of there. Delete. Like say say you forgot about the hip to um, the core area. You need to go back in there. Uh, honestly, this part painting this uh, piece usually takes a while, so I'm not going to go too in depth. Especially if you, especially if you have a oh, I just got a Discord message. So you guys, no, it doesn't look good. Um, especially if you have a belt. Then it gets even more annoying because the belt's going to kind of crumple. And normally you'd have controls around the belt. Uh, I don't on this character though because the, my camera's really far away from him, so it doesn't doesn't matter too much. Um, but yeah, so if you wanted to fix the hips before you mirror, which you should, because you should fix all the all the joints in the hierarchy, you would uh, identify the the two joints involved with this, right? Because you need to unlock those two joints. So you know you need the hip, right? But if you go to the knee, that's not the right joint at all. You're gonna instead need to mess with the root. So the root is this core one in there, right? So we're gonna unlock the root. And I'm going to, I'm gonna select every other one just to make sure that I have everything else locked. So it's only this root unlocked. Then we're gonna need to go back down to that leg. Let's find that and the hip. So we're going to be bouncing back between those two joints in there. And right now, this knee or this hip is taking a lot of the uh, the weights from this, and it's a pretty stark transition. So I'm going to start with that smoothing in there. Since we only have the knee, I mean, we only have the hip and the core unlocked. We're pretty much free to just smooth as much as we want between these two. But be careful not to grab too much from the other, other side. Um, like if, if you go over here, you wouldn't want to you wouldn't want to grab too much of this of this stuff over here. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna try to get a nice clean transition there. I'm not gonna do this for very long because painting this kind of junction, like I was saying, any complex junction like the shoulder. Where the arm is going to take a, a while and take some experimentation based on what your model looks like. And then I'm going to go into the root and kind of smooth these as well. Give it back some of these points. There we go. Yeah, look at how high up that, that quad goes by default. You want to dial that back in and give give it also some of that influence over the leg in there or over that 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 root. So we can go scroll back down to the other joint. Where is it? No. Oh. There we go. Hip in there. Yeah, it's going nicely right there. Um, I also have this little bit of cloth hanging in front, so I would probably need to add to that, right? Because if, if I try to just smooth this right now, since they're all black on here, I have no value to even smooth between because there's no verts really even connecting those to these other white portions. So I need to instead add on these ones. So I start adding to this. I'm gonna upgrade my, uh, I'm gonna give it a little bit more value so I don't have to do as many strokes painting that. And 
Yeah, so it's starting to bend up there now, but you can see where I'm going to run into problems with this type of object being this, this close to um, one of my pieces of, uh, of, of like that leg area in there. So let's just keep painting it up. And see what that looks like. So yeah, it's stretching out pretty bad. Um, but honestly, that's pretty much the best we're gonna get it at this level at least. Um, and so for some of these interior verts, it's kind of hard to see them. So I always like to drag from a point that I can see into there. And then you can see that Maya is able to kind of figure out which zone you're trying to paint with that. Yeah, so that's that's pretty much it. And then say we're, we're cool with those values, it, it would take a little bit more uh, messing around with to get good ones in there. Um, you probably need to start painting parts of the belt as well, and that's gets it's pretty annoying. Uh, but say you're you're good with those, like so. This other side doesn't have any weight any weights painted on it, right? So you need to mirror it over now. And if you go into skin, mirror skin weights, you have that same panel from earlier, but we didn't record it yet. So uh, just look at this box right here, this, this little parentheses to see which, you're which way you're gonna be mirroring. So remember, everything out here in this direction is X positive. You can tell by how this little, uh, this little manipulator down here points. That's point, uh, since X is on this side, you know that that's the X axis going left and right. And you know this is the positive side of that. So we need to do positive to negative right here. Then you need to make sure all of your joints are all zeroed out. And you do this at the very end. So you, you've gone through all the, all the arm, all like the fingers and stuff, and you just uh, click mirror on that. And then let's double check this joint. Let's start moving these around. Yeah, so no, notice how now our leg has the same mobility as the other one. Before it didn't have any of those weights on it, but now all of those skin weights are, have been transferred over. But yeah, so that's, that's pretty much the main methodology of painting these weights up. Um, the, there is one, one more thing that's pretty useful, I'd say, in addition to having this like, component editor where you can just edit ver uh, ver vertices like one by one, you can see exactly where they're bound to, you know. Uh, you can also go in and uh, say you wanted, so say we had, I'm just gonna go back into paint skin weights mode. Uh, I guess it doesn't matter where. So if I had painted a little bit on these, right? So now these are these are bound instead of to that knee, they're bound a little bit to that hip. Oh wait, no, that, that won't work because I don't I don't have that one unlocked. Let me go back and redo that. I need to select the proper one. So between these this knee and hip. So say I painted a little bit on that hip and stole a little bit of influence away from that knee. So now when I move, do I still have my keys on there? No. It's kind of bent out of position. So if you know that like you want these verts to have the same weights as this vert right here, you can also click on that vert. You can go to skin, copy uh, vertex weights, and then you can click on that one, skin, paste vertex weights. You can just do that to, to the rest of them too. I just drag selected over them, just to paste vertex weights from this one. So that, that only works if you know one of your verts has a good weight that you want on the other one. Uh, but yeah, other than that, uh, 
it's pretty, it, it's another niche tool, but um, yeah, let me make sure just before I wrap this up that, uh, yeah, so we went over adding smoothing. I don't want you guys using replace and, or, or scale, pretty much just adding and smoothing. And uh, remember you have this button that snaps to uh, the, the joint you have selected. You have this one that selects everything else and is really useful for mass locking everything down. Remember you only work with two joints unlocked at a time. If you have any more than that, you're probably going to be risking some, some problems with your, your, your joints being, getting weight where you don't want that weight to exist. That, when I say weight, I'm talking about this, this white, that influence, because we're painting the skin weights, the, the influence of these joints. So yeah, keep two unlocked at a time. Uh, the, that, that, uh, copy vertex weight, paste vertex weight is right here as well. If you have that menu opened when you're doing it and, uh, you can toggle between selection mode and paint mode in here. And remember it's B and left click to control the brush size. I'm holding B and I'm holding left click and I'm dragging to do that. But yeah, that's pretty much all of the tools. And we, we did mirroring as well. Uh, there's some other there's some other tools in here as well, uh, but I find for just the base introductory Maya course, the adding and smoothing is uh, fine enough. It's fine enough. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stop recording now.